Welcome to Run Long Run Healthy, where each week my co-host Brady Homer and I usually break down the latest in run science and research into practical strategies we can hopefully all find ways to apply to our own running. This week, I'm looking at a new paper that investigates the relationship between your running habits and your injury risk. I think most would agree that most running injuries occur through overuse and especially from ramping up your mileage too quickly. We've got the classic 10% rule that has been around forever, which basically says don't increase your weekly mileage by more than 10% week over week. But this new paper, which I actually first discovered in one of Brady's newsletters, which I'll link to below, and I'll link to the paper below too. It analyzes the injury rates of runners relative to the recent mileage, then applies three different models to see which one best predicts injury risk. And what's interesting here is that one of the models that the authors used was the classic 10% rule. And at least using the data in their data set, they found that it didn't really hold up. But they proposed a different method, which they did find was actually a much more accurate predictor of running injury risk. And interestingly, this is also a sort of 10% rule. Okay, so let's look at the classic 10% rule. So the well-established 10% rule is really a rule of thumb. It states, you shouldn't increase your weekly total mileage by more than 10% week over week. I think most experienced runners and coaches would consider the 10% rule to be a decent enough guideline, but not something that you should necessarily follow strictly. It's not set in stone. For example, it doesn't consider the distribution of your miles throughout the week or the intensity or the makeup of the different runs you're doing throughout the week. It just considers weekly mileage is one big blob. Also, I think for total beginners that are running really low weekly mileage and more experienced runners who are running high weekly mileage, the 10% number isn't necessarily so relevant. And just as an aside, it's worth remembering that the 10% rule doesn't say you should increase your weekly mileage by 10% per week. It says don't increase by more than. When I was doing a bit of research for this video, some of the critiques online were saying, but 10% per week, every week isn't a good model. And of course it isn't. You need setback weeks and things like that. Okay, cool. So onto the study, which was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in July 2025 by a team mainly out of Aarhus University in Denmark, but with contributors from all over the world. So the researchers tracked over 5,200 runners wearing Garmin GPS watches over an 18-month period, gathering data on more than 588,000 running sessions. The median running experience was 9.2 years. The primary aim of the study was to figure out whether spikes in training volume, either during a single session or over the course of a week, led to a higher injury risk. Okay, the study categorizes changes in training volume in three different ways. The first is week-to-week -week ratio, comparing one week's mileage to the week before it. This model effectively is testing the classic 10% rule. What is the increased injury risk per percentage of week-by-week -week mileage increase. The second way is acute to chronic workload ratio, a ratio of the most recent week's mileage to the average of the prior three weeks. This could be considered a rolling version of the first method. Instead of just looking at the prior week, we're looking at the previous three weeks. And then the more novel method, which the researchers hypothesized was gonna be more accurate, was a single session spike, comparing the distance of a run the longest run in the previous 30 days. In other words, if your longest run in the last 30 days was 10 miles and you went out and run 11 miles today, that would be a 10% increase, a 10% spike. They then bucketed injuries into progression categories. So injuries that had occurred when the training load had either decreased or it increased by less than 10%. Injuries that had occurred when there had been a small spike, a 10 to 30% increase in training load. Moderate spike of 30 to 100% increase and a large spike of 100% increase or more. And what did they find? That single session spikes were strongly predictive of injury and the risk scaled with the size of the spike. Small spikes in single session volume were associated with a 64% higher injury risk. Moderate spikes were associated with a 52% higher injury risk and large spikes were associated with a 128% higher injury risk. In other words, if you increase your longest long run distance by between 10 and 30%, you're increasing your risk of injury by 64%. On the other hand, they found that the two models that looked at weekly mileage changes 
weren't predictive of injury risk at all. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So this led the authors of the study to propose the single session paradigm. In other words, forget weekly mileage based calculations. Your injury risk seems to hinge much more on your percentage increase in long run. So you should focus on that instead. Okay, so my thoughts on these findings, is it time to get rid of the old 10% rule? I'm skeptical. Here's the thing, the data for the weekly mileage models is pretty messy and it's very hard to draw any conclusions from it. It was hard to find much of a correlation at all between week to week mileage and injury risk. If we look for a second at the p-values of the methods that use weekly miles, we'll see that the p-values are pretty high. So the p-value is a value that tells you the probability of seeing the result if there is truly no effect. In other words, if the p-value, let's say if it's above something like 0.05, it's much more likely that the results we're seeing are due to some random effect, and it's hard to take any conclusions out of it. You can see that for the week-to-week -week and three rolling week methods, the p-values are pretty high, suggesting we can't take much away from this data. Why could they find no correlation that would help support the classic 10% rule? Well, it's hard to say, and the paper doesn't really go into details, but a couple of things to bear in mind. As I mentioned, the classic 10% rule doesn't consider distribution of miles. So there could be runners in there that are doing a low number of runs, but high mileage or lower mileage, but higher number of runs. It could maybe be the case that if an injury was sustained at the start of a heavy training week, that because in the end that week was incomplete, it looks like a week with less mileage. And then I do wonder if there could be some survivorship or experience bias here that muddies this weekly mileage data a little bit, which is to say more experienced runners could probably tolerate bigger swings in their weekly mileage, much better than more novice runners. I could definitely imagine that there could be some experienced runners in this data set that skew the data with inconsistent training. Me, for example, I've been running for years. I've been fairly inconsistent recently. And I just know that I could run a few, let's say 20 or 30 mile weeks, and then I could go and double that for a week. And I don't think I would suffer any consequences. But what we can see from the paper is that the p-values of the longest long run method were consistently low, meaning that there's a high confidence level in this correlation of the longest long run percentage increase versus injury risk. So what am I thinking after looking at this study? I'm thinking that in terms of injury prevention, just focusing on weekly mileage isn't enough. It doesn't cut it. It doesn't tell you the full story. And the classic 10% rule, it's a decent guideline. It's not one to just ignore, but we could probably make an argument that a new 10% rule would actually be more valuable and prevent more injury. The new 10% rule being don't increase your longest long run distance by more than 10% of your previous longest long run over your last 30 days. And the data seems fairly reliable here that that's a pretty solid rule. And I think a lot of this just makes sense for runners, especially those of us who have been injured following a long run in the past. Long runs, after all, are when you're putting the most prolonged stress on your muscles, your legs, your joints, your feet. Makes a lot of sense. So do we need to rewrite the 10% rule? No, I think we consider the old 10% rule as part of our bag of tricks when we're thinking about injury prevention, along with this new 10% rule, along with looking at the distribution and types of runs you're doing and recovery practices and so on. Okay, I hope you found that episode interesting. As always, please leave comments, let me know what you think of it, and till next time.